following is a production of Locked Up Sports. Everybody, this is Don LaGreca from the Michael K Show. When it comes to talking sports, Bob Walters and Brett Grasso are the authority. Can't wait. When it comes to talking sports, they're the authority. It's Bob Walters and Brett Grasso. It's Locked Up Sports, and it starts now. Bring them out, bring them out. Hey. Bring them out, bring them out. Yeah. Bring them out, bring them out. Hey, bring them out. Here we go. Bob Walters, Brett Grosso from the Brian Gunzel Studios. This is Locked Up Sports. The Mets are in free fall. Losers of six straight. Judge is out indefinitely. Can the Yankees keep the division leading Rays within striking distance until he returns? Denver, two wins away from an NBA title. We have a series in the Stanley Cup Finals as the Panthers win Game 3 in overtime and the Saudis make the PGA look like fools as two rival tours merge. Brett, what is up? The Mets are in complete and utter free fall. A disaster. So dead. I, I, it's... Talk it's, about a bad week. You go into Atlanta, <laughs> I mean, you know, you expect... But they've been doing this. We were talking about this. Like... It, Chipper Jones's kid, who he named Shea because he tore the Mets up, is probably like 20 years old now, 15 years old. The kid. Now. The kid. Okay, this has been happening our whole lives. And now, and listen, I said it before. I said good Mets teams don't go into Atlanta and win. I had no expectations. The Mets go in there. They played okay. They had three run leads for the first time in their history. They had three run leads in three consecutive games, and they lost because the bullpen is garbage. They can't get hits. It went from bad to worse today because Alonzo's on the IL. Brett, what, what, what do you got to say about, about this week at the Mets? I, what do you mean? They're hitting, Bob. We're finally hitting. <laughs> finally hitting. This is, this is what we've been waiting for all year, right? We have, you know, with this pitching we bought and that bullpen we've shored up in the offseason, the hitting came through and we're golden, right? A Verlander, no. Scherzer, no. Alonzo Hurt. Nagosik? Nagosik in the bullpen. Go? Garbage. They Tommy both. Hunter? Oh, my God. The, the, he pitched in Chicago that one time. So let's bring him in when we need the most desperate win of the year to avoid a sweep in Atlanta. And then and then after, if it couldn't get any bad, if it couldn't be any worse, if you sat around and watched the postgame, they just lost three crushing, crushing blows to Atlanta. They've losers of six in a row. They're fading out of every type of playoff possibility there is. They're only three out. We'll get to that in a minute. You want to hear the manager, and you want to hear him rip into this team because you as a fan and me as a fan and Brett as a fan yep. are pissed. 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 And what does he say? Proud of my guys. Proud of you guys. Proud. I'm getting sick and tired of Buck's act here with he, – he's Yeah, you know what? Enough of this. We want to show some emotion. He shows no emotion. He doesn't come out and get thrown out of games. He doesn't. They hit Alonzo. Look, they, Alonzo was barking at him after he hit a home run in even, game one. Even if they didn't do it on purpose, let's get something going. Let's hit some batters. Let's play some real base. Well, you hit one of mine, I'm hitting two of yours. Yeah. Listen, get, do it. Missing get calls energy. out there, Rumps. I'm getting thrown out of this game. But also, and listen, they had some energy. In all three games, they had a lead. Yesterday was outrageous. I mean, I went to work. It was like 10 to 6 or 10 to 5, 10 to 4, something like that. And I t- and they lose to lose that game with the the home runs. Alvarez two home runs. Oh, it, the, opposite the field, the guy uh, his eleventh home run of the year. He is one behind the uh, leader for catchers in home runs. This was this a, kid is going off. If th- this was a this is and a, the Mets are doing nothing. A classic, a classic. If you want to show somebody who comes in from another country or another planet, and they're like the Mets, what are the Mets? What is it like to be a Mets fan? You play them all the games from these last seven, these last, you know what, you even include the three wins. So you play them the last eight games. They win three. Okay, we got something going. We're looking good. Swept by Toronto at home. Into Atlanta for a big series. Leads, multiple run leads in every game. Lose every game in a heartbreaking fashion. Verlander, the big pitcher, top ten of all time in my book. Reigning Cy Young Award winner, giving up four runs in the first inning in big games. 
Scherzer did it last year with them. The Mets. Those two come in in a series in Atlanta that we know we have to win. They have to have big starts. And combined, they give up, what is it, 11 or 12 runs? And I'm sick and tired of Atlanta being a well-oiled machine. 30 years At now. least for DeGrom, he, he pitched one nothing and we lost. <laughs> That's what you do around here. You want to lose, you lose like a Cy Young Award winner loser as a New York Met. I mean, they, they, and to lose 13 to 10... You get the, to lose by a field goal, and the, the, the Braves are just hitting the home run. Who would have had a better outing? Verlander the other day, or DeGrom still needs the Tommy John, though, with the bad elbow. <laughs> oh, that's right, Tommy John. You know what? The, 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 the one good thing they did, the one good thing the Mets do is send people away. They sent them away. So he's the you know former Met now good does not apply to Degrom who's now on the shelf. But he's, we're signing him in two years. But Are Texas, you out of your mind? We're, we're, Degrom's coming back. But Texas, this is, is the right beginning. There. This is the plan. This was a Cohen plan at the beginning. They talked about this. I mean, you listen. Ready? He's coming back. Listen to this game. You get four RBIs oh. from Nimmo. You get three RBIs from Alvarez. You get two home runs from Alvarez. A grand slam from Nimmo. You have Verlander pitching. You score ten runs, and you lose. And you lose the game. 13 to 10. Do you know how many games they've lost where they've scored over eight runs this year? A, lot, a good amount. And they haven't scored, had many games like that. And we just That's went- the sick part is they haven't had a lot of high-scoring games, but they've had a lot of high-scoring games where they lost. And then here's the deal. I mean, look, this is, what, this is the pitching from yesterday, okay? And that's another thing that pissed me off, too, with Buck. He said, well, we used all our arrows. What? What were they, Nerf arrows? Because here's what, here's what the arrows you used. You had Verlander, three innings, seven hits, four runs. Nagosik, an inning and a third, four hits and a run. Brigham, an inning, a run and a hit. Rally, two run, uh, two hits. And then, and then Robertson, and you know what, Robertson? It's now time we can start getting on Robertson, okay? He, he's, not, he's turning into what he was playing above his head, right? He's not that good as he was the first three of the games. And the worst part is... Or he's having a little slump, which any pitcher at this point can have. He he can still be, you know... uh, Listen, the guy has proven that he can do it. He didn't just do it for a day or two days or, you know... he's We've relied on him so much, and he has come through for us. He's now, like anybody, he's having a little... He's having a rough patch. Now, we'll see in the next couple weeks what happens with that. Fair, fair. I'll give him a pass. And then the game, okay, a game you've lost now, you've lost five in a row. You're in the extra, you're in extra innings, you've blown a six-run lead. Who is T. Hunter? Tommy Hunter. You've and seen Tommy Hunter. He's come around, but he, he hasn't pitched since Chicago. All of a sudden, you have Tommy Hunter in, uh, listen, these are must win games. They're not. They're not. Because this, and that's the this, sad part. No, no, when you've lo- when you've dropped two to Atlanta, you were leading. They're not m- must win games in terms of oh my god, if you don't do this, you're not making the playoffs. That is a crushing defeat to get on a plane to go to Pittsburgh and be when you thought you had to have something out of that series. And now not only that, if you didn't hear, the plane barely even showed up. So it showed up so late. The Mets don't even get into Pittsburgh till I think 5 a.m. at their hotel arrival this morning, which means you know they're blowing the game tonight. They got Carrasco on the mound. I hope they shipped him out early. <laughs> they didn't ship him out early. They were like, look, he didn't pitch yesterday. He's probably in the hotel bar last night used eating all- cheeseburgers by himself they, watching the Mets law. They used all their arrows. There's no arrows left. Okay. Andrew McCutcheon, as we're looking here, he's going to get his 2,000th career hit against the Mets tonight. Um, the... Listen, it's it's such it's so well, it's so frustrating because it's thirty well, listen, years. Brooklyn never listen, win in Atlanta. On top of that, listen, we just talked about Alonzo. Alonzo's out now for three to three four, four weeks. weeks. He's got some kind of wrist contusion, sprain. The Mets, you know, we'll see how that all goes. You got Vientos coming in, and he's going to start playing first base now. I don't know if it's going to be every day. I think Canna's going to get some reps in there in a couple of days, but at least we're going to see a little more of Vientos. They. It, I'm not, let's, let's not say let's not rely on these baby Mets no, first of all that's what bad at all. Do. Bad we, no, no, bring up that is kids. not it. We are here to have them as if we get anything out of them. Great, but right now we cannot be like Alvarez is the guy we're riding on. Or Beatty's got to come through. No, no, no. You need the guys. Lindor, give me a break. Oh, Hit for some average. Get me started with Lindor. I mean, he's hitting. The, he's hitting two hundred, and just because he gets a hit, he's got. He's got a couple guys on third. 
and he get and he's racked up a couple RBIs. Lindor is garbage. McNeil's okay. hot or cold. The guy can't keep it together. McNeil is not very hitting very well, but I'm gonna give McNeil a pass. Okay, you got automatic outs this lineup. Your DH is supposed to be a a big time hitter. Oh, all no. he does is hit. No, our it's... DH is an automatic out. Brett, we have a DH and an automatic out. We scored ten runs and we lost. Who has control of our lineup? Have we decided at this point who? I mean, no, we've had a guest on now who explained. Yep. Listen, explain. give him credit. Give him credit. Because last week, Mark yes. said Mark that. Healy. Mark Healy. He came out and said, Buck is not the one putting this lineup out every night. He's saying it's the analytics guys, it's the front office, whatever it is. And Buck, I'm not saying he doesn't have some control over something. Maybe he can sit a guy out if he wants to sit him out for the day and we're going to play with it. But let me tell you, the analytics guys are the ones putting these guys in the lineup. Buck, I think, may have confirmed it in a press conference yeah, the other day. He, he said, we made the lineup. But listen, um, Buck, what is Buck doing, though? What, is Buck, what I, does Buck do? Then what does he do? If Buck they, isn't making the lineup, what does he do? What does Buck do? Okay. How do you accept this job if you don't have control of your lineup? That's he, what I have wants, a hard time believing. I'll give you the answer for that. He wants his championship. He wants his ring. He thinks he, he deserves a ring. He got robbed of it. He got robbed of a dynasty at the Yankees. He figured this is the most money. Okay, you got the most expensive team in history, and they're they're floating five hundred or below. He proved he can do it last year. You don't just do it; you can have those teams. Like last year, the guy went out and he had one hundred and one wins. He, you know, down the stretch they floundered. You know, you want to talk about floundering? They didn't make a good run, and then into the playoffs it continued. But I mean, that's the worst one hundred and one. I don't have it on Buck. I have this on Epler, and I'm very concerned, to be honest with you, about the bad moves he made at the trade deadline last year. That we may have been like, oh, great, here comes Vogelbach. Great, we lost one of the only 300 hitters we had in the A-ball, which who knows what that pans out. They prefer Vogelbach, all gone. We ended up getting Darren Ruff I've for J.D. You, Davis. For, three months, for two months now, Vogelbach is garbage. Darren Ruff for J.D. Davis, who's hitting about 280 with, I think, 38 RBIs, which is competing with uh, up there in top 10 for the league. Put him on the list. Former Met, now good. Unbelievable. Yeah, and then you go out and you pick up, uh, who was it, um, Tyler Naquin? Tyler Naker, who, who we lost one of our only uh, minor league relievers he for. Hit the water that guy's he gone. He's, out he's out gone. Boat. He, I don't even know where he is right now. He's going to be on the Ducks by the end Listen, of the summer. Here's the problem: if it's not the pitching, it's the hitting. If it's not the hitting, it's the pitching. Yeah, but is if it, it's not the either, But who's running this show? We pay all the money in the world to everybody. We're paying. We paid all the money to the Will Bonds to buy this team. We paid all the money to Scherzer and Verlander and and Lindor, and now the guy running this show. Is Epler? He is not one of the top tier guys going around. He does not have any cred in this building, in terms in this league, when it comes to making stuff like Theo Epstein or David Stearns coming over from the Brewers. These are guys that we need. If you want to do it and spend the money, that's where you need to spend the money. Yeah, we we got this you whole need big that thing. We got the best car yep. the money could buy. Yeah, and we put garbage gas in it. Yeah, and and now it, and. And Epler, I mean, Epler, do I trust, do you trust him to make the deals of the deadline? I have, I have a concern that knowing his job may be on the line for this, he may make more desperation moves. I don't think any of these guys who are playing in the majors for us, any of the rookies, are getting traded. I think they're, I don't think any of it's even close to happening. I think it may have been one of them, don't know who, if by some chance we were at the Braves right now. We were eight games ahead. We were cruising towards You'll whatever. Never the Braves. No, no. But if it, I could see if we were in a different scenario. Scenario of a little bit more of a race right now, where it was, um, I, where we may have, if something came available, we may, if Otani came available, there may be guys that are going, but, but, but it's not happening right now. There's no, we got to get rid of. I don't care where he goes, Vogelbach got to go, absolutely gone. We, we got rid of Nito this week. See you later. How about a little emotion? Buck does nothing. Listen, and I'm not going to say because we all wanted Buck. We were all screaming for Buck. But Wiz, it's like he doesn't care. He's, I'm proud of these guys. We gave them all our arrows. What? What? The- Listen, we're sitting here pulling our hair out, watching this garbage. And Buck's like, well, I'm proud of these guys. You know, we, they're doing their best they can. They'll come out of it. They'll come out. When are they coming out of it? No, this is who they are. Because besides- Right now, this is who they are. There are guys who can play better on this team, but they've proven this year that they're not doing it this year. You're the guy who's supposed to... Turn this around, because besides the Grand Sand Slam single, I can't name another big, big spot that the Mets have overcome no. and beat the Braves. When you look back and the guys who were good last year, and you go and you, these guys, you look at Starling Marte, Jeff McNeil, these guys the year before didn't have years like that. 
Which guy are they? All of a sudden, you can't. If none of these guys are having t- uh, good years, Lindor, Marte, Jeff McNeil, you can't just rely on the Nimos and the Alonzos, and especially when one guy gets hurt. And then you go even more and go, well, last year you go, Canna had a good year. And you go, there was other guys that all of a sudden, when nobody's having a decent year, you're in big trouble. Let me tell you, the Mets win zero ball games if Tommy Pham doesn't start going off the last week. Tommy Pham was carrying the team, and Tommy Pham does not carry good teams. No, but at teams. least we've now figured out who's supposed to be on this roster. It's supposed to be Tommy Pham, and it's supposed to be Canna. The other junk and the Vogelbach's yeah, got to go. Is it, Brett, because Tommy it Pham is. stinks. I'm not saying he's months. great. I'm not saying he stays on the roster. I'm saying right now, other guys need to go. Oh, and that like, listen, who the guys who aren't we've proven are not capable of barely being in the major leagues this year for any team, let alone a championship team who was supposed to be winning 101 games last year and supposed to be even better this year. No. And let me tell you is that's all fine and good. And we have all the guys who maybe the hitting is going to start coming around. Maybe we'll start getting the lineup that Buck wants out there. But one thing we can't change is how old our pitching staff is and how old that they look, the top two guys on our staff. And did Father Time just catch up catch up with him? Because let me tell you, he's undefeated, Father Time. And some days it just is over. Listen, it's McGill tonight. It's not Carrasco. It's McGill. Oh, okay. Okay, so we need a stopper. You, you, this team's going nowhere. And I said no matter, no matter what goes on. As far as the batting goes, it's going nowhere without Verlander and Scherzer. And Verlander, he pitched great the last week. We were at the game Friday night. He had a great pitch very well. Okay, he pitched. He gets seven innings, six innings, seven innings, one run. Or no, yeah, one run. Eight strikeouts. Pitched great. But when you're a great all-time pitcher, Hall of Fame pitcher like that, even when you're on the decline, you're going to put up performances like that just because your greatness will come out. Okay, even on the downside of it. He is now not, he's not consistent. Scherzer has not been consistent, and this team goes nowhere without. And when them. you can't, what happens is they they can't locate those pitches perfectly. They they will go and have their ten strikeouts. They will go. They will be. But if when they're missing, just missing a little bit, and those calls they used to get when you don't show the umpire that you have total command over it, they start not getting those calls. They're not the pitchers they are. Then. No, but here's the thing: when they That's pitch it. a good game, then you get the back breaking loss they're, like we with the bullpen blowing. they would never leave hanging sliders dead down the zone as many times as they have been both of them Listen. that's let me tell you they're getting beat by two or three pitches right. a game right here's what bad team. ready here's what bad it's not they're pitching great here's and then they're not pitching or, great he gave no, them four runs in the first inning here's what bad no, well, teams do not there, bad but teams, in like our performance he pitched great but still let up like here's what know. here's what bad teams do right when they when they when they pitch real well the other night when we were there friday night they lose a one nothing, yes. three nothing game. Yeah, that when I can they, When they don't pitch well and they score ten runs, they lose thirteen ten. That's what bad teams do. The Mets are a bad, bad team, team right now. Yeah. Okay. The Mets are the. What What do you do? Do you go and spend? Do you go trade some people? Do you go pick up guys, or do you just say, you know what? Let's ride it out with who we got. Get rid of the garbage and ride it out. Or are you willing right now to go trade a Ronnie Mauricio or uh, someone else yeah. in the minors to go pick up help? I'm talking about help, Bob. That may only be around for this I year. I think the Alonzo. Well, are injury, you in for that? Because I'm not. I think the Alonzo. I'm not. In, and I think the Alonzo injury might mean. It's gonna. It, it, we could slow. It could be slowing now. Ending because or the you, Alonso have been this? for weeks. How, how about this? Survive? Forget all that. The Mets right now go on a two week where they just it continues. Okay, the Mets are twelve games back. All right, Bob. Oh. All right, they're five games out of or six games out of a playoff spot. Yeah, you're six games out of wild card. You're not in the wild card run because you, you got seven teams ahead of you. If you had that, okay. Did that three and a half? Do you trade out. Scherzer, Verlander, or anybody else? Uh, or do you start shopping people because no, they will I take think, them? I don't think they'll take them. Bullshit. Take them because you're gonna you get to no way forty million. He's who's gonna pay them the forty million? That's anybody will pay anything this year to stick him in their rotation in the playoffs. Really? Anybody? The Yankees will pick take him. Hundred percent. The Yankees. You're telling me right now, Nestor Cortez on the IL. You're telling me not right now. At the trade deadline, the Yankees can pick up a for a, a Scherzer or Verlander. Who? Listen, they're probably not even trading everything that you think they are. The Mets are. You're getting a little bit of prospects out of the guy. You're not getting somebody you know, for this year. I mean, well, yeah, you don't think that they're not just going to spend the money and say, "Listen, he's already." No, got- I don't think they, they make trades like that. And because here's the deal, ready? Right? I think one, someone does it. One, because you don't think he goes York. back to Houston. Oh, I think people. You don't gonna, think Houston would do that? No, I think they would. Yeah. I don't think the Mets. I think they're going to knock her. They're going to kick the, the the tires on that one. Teams will call if the Mets and get that, a bad two the, weeks. The Mets go get a middle. Re- the, Mets, the Mets go get some pitching. They add into their pitching prospects in the minor leagues. That's no. all it would be. He kicked uh, Uncle Steve guaranteed a championship in five years. 
You can't start a rebuild in three. We're not rebuilding. We have the pieces, yeah, yes, Bob. You are. You you're not rebuilding. You we, you're, you're going out. You're just trading it because now you have that money. You can go. With, uh, now it's the Otani. You're trading to Otani. Okay. You you're, not pay, you're, not, you're not. You're not. You're not trading you're for Otani, but you're giving up Scherzer Verlander. And next year you will. You will if, listen. If you want, you have all that money. You go towards Otani. No. no now you're the Knicks. Now what you're do you Knicks. just say? Listen. Do you say this didn't work? No, Brett. Now you're the Knicks. Yo, we're getting the LeBron. We're getting LeBron. We're gonna. We're gonna trade these guys. Don't worry. We're making room for LeBron. You make it room for Otani. He still he can go wherever he wants. No, it, those, it's it's Japanese it's more of a it's more of a it's more of a if the opportunity presents itself to get rid of what one or the other, it's not going to be both. Okay, it would so be either it, it, to for Verlander. You you honestly, you it what would be want? for Verlander. What do you want? Uh, your top pitching prospect in the minors. Really? For Verlander and his contract. See you later. And, and because, we keep Scherzer for because the next those, year. Because those pitching prospects have worked out so great for history for the We Mets. need to bo- that turns into the next year, Bob. See, that's Both what you don't get. Her. You're Wilson. wrong. Bob, you're Isn't talking you're worried about this guy pitching on the Mets mound. I'm not. Next year, that's the guy who gets <laughs> you the big trade. No, next year that's your chip. That's right. what you're missing. That guy, the top pitching prospect, comes over. There's your next year's chip for when you're making your so next you're trade. You're going to trade away any hopes of this. You're season. 12 you games are. back. It's over. You're paying a guy fifty million dollars to go play. Who's has a five ERA? Who do you who, think? So who do you think's paying Verland the fifty million for forty million dollars? A team in the race that wants to win the World Series you right now for this year. You just said he's got a five ERA. Why do I want Verland? Because he's still answer. Verlander. They will t- listen. They will 100% take him. He, Verlander is now pitching on a team where he can lose one nothing. For what? To start the next Generation K? Or maybe the next... You're not. I'm not the for the keep you're, you're acting like prospects. We are on a team, a win-now team. You are right. Yeah, they're win-now. It, I, you have faith in Verlander to be your number one next year for $50 million? D- Is he pitching like that I'm now? I'm not worried about the money because we got the money. $50 million, whatever. That's... Whatever for the money is, is not good. The Mets are not going to be chimping out, like skimping out on things because... You're wrong. You're 100% wrong. No, I disagree. No. They would have picked up every prospect then this year. Why didn't they give everybody everything? It doesn't work that way. No. They 100% could have had all the extra guys and have... You could have Bassett on your team. You could have had Stroman on your team. You could have had Syndergaard on your team. All the guys. You don't want them. But I'm saying the Mets, then they would have done it. They could have done it. They all wanted to play for New York. There's a whole bunch of guys. It doesn't work that way. If you... You don't have money for everybody, even if you have all the money in the world. I mean, listen, and, and I just would like to see... Do, do you want Steve Cohen to come out and say something? Do you want to see a state of the a state of the, the franchise? Because listen, here's what they need. Here's what they need. Ready? In the next three days, they need a closed door players only meeting. You need somebody's got to get fired. A landmark firing, okay? Whether it be a hit, a pitching coach, a hitting coach, something that somebody's got to lose their job. They need a closed door meeting. There's got to be some chairs thrown around that locker room, and. Show some fire. Look at me and you. We're sitting here yelling into these microphones, arguing with each other because we're pissed off because we're watching this garbage. And the team doesn't seem pissed off. Now you just lost our best player who's having his best year, okay, for the next three to four weeks when we're teetering on the brink of it's over. There's We've still 100 been, games left in this season. The this sickest part games. is we couldn't even get them to start Alvarez for weeks. We've been screaming for weeks for him to just even get in the game. And now the guy's in the game and look what's happening. And now, what do they do? They pump us full of Vogel back. No, yeah, all the Vogel. Bu- no, we got Vogel Buck is what we got. <laughs> Freaking Vogel Buck over here uh, ruining it's my it's season. Sad. And now, so now the... Uh, the Mets are in the Pittsburgh tonight. Pittsburgh's not a bad team either, by the way. Pittsburgh's the in. Mets went to sleep at 8 a.m. They have zero chance of winning this baseball <laughs> tonight. tonight. It works that way. David, listen. I, you have to be at the ball club at ballpark at 1. But that, there's 100 games left. Uh, tonight, as of tonight, 100 games left. No Plenty play. of time. Yes. The Braves were further. I, I can't compare to it. You know what? But I'm so sick of the Braves. It's so frustrating. It's it, They never beat the Braves. They never beat the Braves, Brett. For as long as we've been alive, they, it was one. What what are the big moment besides the Grand Slam single have the Mets had where they basically overcome the demons and beat the Braves? There isn't one. You know what? They chased them in the nine eleven year, fell short. Every other year, fell short. Even when they went they went to the World Series, it was like wild card. They didn't win the division. Last year they had a ten game lead, blew the division, you know what? lost. Enough of the Mets. You know what? Let's go to a team that can beat the Braves, the Yankees. Yankees lost Judge. They're not beating anybody without Judge. And no, they're not catching uh, Tampa. Because Judge is now out indefinitely, okay? That contract started. He's hurt now all year, right? 
Hits the IL for the second time. Yeah. He's running through walls. A nice catch. Great Gold catch. Glover. You'll see it on highlights Gold and everything. Glover. He's now injured. He's on the IL for the second straight time. It's a toe. They don't know how long it's going to be. I heard, I think it was it Justin Tuck. Reminds saying that me of the drain pipe. Mickey Mantle than the drain <laughs> pipe. Look it up, kids. Mickey Mantle was drunk. You don't even know. Imagine if that drain pipe didn't exist. He probably would have never drank, right? Mickey Mantle was, a, that was an alcoholic. That's the problem with Mickey Mantle. The drain pipe was not stopping him from drinking. He was having a good time either way. Drain so, pipe or no drain pipe. The Yankees now, okay, so let's say Judge is out, right? And, and Cortez, okay? Cortez, 15 day. He'll miss two starts. That's not, yeah, 15 day. That means you're going to pick up a baseball it's in two day, in two weeks. No, you're going to know in two weeks you pick up a baseball. You don't even start. No, he's like, you, you know, you might not see Cortez for a month. That's not. That's how it works. I I, I'm not saying that. That's not. That's him. What's that's today? Not What's today? The ninth. All Six day. nine. You're gonna see. Uh, I'll see you on July first. Cortez start. So because they made it retroactive, he's got like four days left on it. I think. But so now the Yankees now good, good luck they with can that. very easily because because you didn't want to do the Baltimore wrap up last week. Baltimore's a good team. The Rays are always a good team. Okay, the Rays are always there. We know they're always there. What the Rays do is they don't blow all their money on like three or four stars. The Rays say we never want to be weak in any position, so we'd rather be average to better than average in every position. If somebody goes down, there's somebody there to fill, fill that spot. The Yankees have nobody to fill Judge's spot. The Mets have nobody to fill Alonzo's spot. Those are big losses. The team's going to suffer. The Rays, they lose somebody. It might not be somebody as good as Alonzo or Judge, but they have somebody to plug in who is more than serviceable. Yeah. And they, they started out with a great season, with a great start, winning the 13-14 in a row. The Yankees could very easily find themselves 12 back of the Rays, and it's over. They have to play 500 ball until Judge comes back. That is their only goal. Be a 500 team. Until Judge comes back. And you're talking three to four. What was it? How long for Judge? Do we know? No, indefinitely. Indefinitely. What's going on? That foot, foot, ankle? Uh, a toe. Toe. Big toe. It's like a, a, a Those are know. tough to, those are tough. You know, people, tough to heal. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you just, there's no way. Uh, indefinitely. Yeah. Is that, that's all you need to know. Indefinitely. It's probably, it could be now, four weeks. It could be six weeks. It could be two weeks. Do you like playing him? It's a little different for Alonzo because he's not going to get hurt in the field. We kind of talked about no, this earlier. I, but, like, are you for, like, let's, Judge wants to go out and play the field. He's a gold glover. The guy's really good in the outfield. He's got a great arm. Do you want, would you just, he wants to play. Do you let him just say whenever he wants to? Or you just so, say, no, we're holding you what, back. What, do you, yeah, do you, do you ask it like, does he come back when he's, He's. I'm gonna play. Hit. He comes back day one. He says, "I'm in the lineup. I'm in the field." He know that's what he's saying. Do you? Can we say no? You're not. You're DH. No, I'm no, sorry. They, no. I don't think they will. I don't. Th- no. First of all, no. He's the captain. Of the should they? Should, should they be looking at? Are you asking? Should he come back? Like if he's seventy five? Should they start DHing hit? him fifty percent of the time? No. 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 First you of all, think Steve a guy like him Steve at his size that can get hurt is over that is so valuable should be in the field making diving catches in a four run ball game where you're winning in the eighth inning? Yeah, and not that you're taking him out. Yeah, because but, he, makes you know, catches. he wins games. I, I, I'm outfit. saying day after day after day in August, you're just going to run him out there in the field. Like, I, I, I don't what's, know. Like, what's your thing? You're saying you got him for 10 years. He keeps getting hurt. Money. No, he keeps getting hurt out in the field. That's why you don't give him 10 years and then and, and a billion dollars or whatever they gave you. I, I know, but the, you, you can never stop someone from getting injured, but a lot of these are chronic injuries. The toe injury isn't always I ran into it and I banged my toe. A lot of times there are chronic injuries that won't go away from, not, from being constantly on your feet and running in the outfield, well, the knees, sh- even shoulders with throwing, and there's a different preparation that comes to being in the field, and I, I understand no. you may not want it. Here's, but Here's what I would do with Judge. I would make sure he's not coming back until he's 100%. I don't care what he says there. You're not coming back till the doctor tells me that you're 100%. You know why? Because with the toe, you start compensating oh, on yeah. the toe, and then your knee is bad. And then you start compensating with the knee, and your hip is bad. But, and now it's a whole thing. But there you, is no 100% with that toe this year. There is not very going to... This year, there's no chance at him being 100%. Oh, I don't there know. is don't a, even know what, what the injury is. We just know a toe. It's a big toe. It's you, big, we have no it's, idea it's, what it is. It, it, let me tell you. Yeah, but we do know what it is. You have just toe stepped on. And now the problem isn't that for us. It's no big deal. We don't have to go run around and do whatever all day. If you at some point they got to send him out there, and if he's got to run every single day in the field, it's going to get a little bit worse. It's really a the guy is so good. It, 
making a dive and catch in the outfield to save one run is not as valuable as having him in that lineup day in and day out. He throws people out. He's he's, he's There's other low. people who can do that that will bat 250 for you. Yeah. I understand that. And it, it's just, uh, I'm talking about every day, I really think, for the longevity of him and Alonzo. And it's not just about getting hurt diving for a ball. It's the actual physical act of having to be in the field and prepare for okay. the game and being out there every so day. So now, here, here come, here's the Yankees' upcoming schedule. I'll give you the next, like, two, two and a half weeks. Tell me, do you think they can stay 500? They got, starting tonight, they got three. Boston. Boston. Okay, three in Boston. Um Wait, wait, hold on. Where are we? We're, we're in uh, June, right? June, what's the name? I'm in June. Where are you? June 9th. I got it. I got it. You got three in Boston. The three home against Boston. Two at yeah. City Field against the Mets. Yeah. Win, 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 win. <laughs> How are we doing so far? We just then, gotta... then three in Boston. Oh, win, win, win. Then. Eight, no. Then a home stand. Three Seattle, three Texas. All right. So you're nine and two. And then you're. Uh, and then, then and you're then, ten. You're ten and five. And then, and then three against Oakland. Ten and five, three against Oakland. You're thirteen. <laughs> you're no, no, no. You're twelve and six. So they will end up twelve and six after they finish. So yes, first of all, <laughs> five hundred twelve and six. It, it's so no, it, no judge uh, with judge uh, fourteen. And they four. have a bad record uh, without judge, but it's so it's so classic that they hit. Listen to this. I like, can't wait till they're, they're playing some of the worst teams. Six. You got 500 team Boston Red Sox, not very good. You got the Mets, d- terrible right now. Okay, they might be 500 team, but they are not playing like a 500 team. Then you got Boston again, and then you got Seattle. Okay, you might lose some of those games. And then you got the Oakland. This was, was suppo- 62 This Mets. is awful. This was supposed to be the summer of Judge and Alonzo, and they're both going for, you know, somewhere in the range of the high 50s or 60s for home runs. The Mets and Yankees are at the top of their divisions. New York's just really heating up, and we haven't had stuff like this. And it's starting to build where this might come every single year. And then all of a sudden, we got we don't even get to see them play each other in the Subway Series on Tuesday and Wednesday. It's going the way. The two guys you bought your tickets. You wanted to see a home run from these guys. You're getting nothing. You're getting a 2:30 DJ Lemayhew <laughs> and Tommy Fam. Tommy Fam's in the <laughs> DH. Vogelbach coming on the other day. 200 bucks a ticket. Yep. Tommy Fam. And Good luck. Little, listen, this summer of Alonzo and and, and yeah. Judge is going the way of the summer of George. Yeah. Right, summer right down the yeah. tubes. Now, listen. On the other side. They're three and a half out of the wild card, the Mets. The Yankees are right in the wild card, okay? There's a hundred games to play, Brett. And that, that is the best part of this. They're playing each other this week. They both can't lose. <laughs> they can't. <laughs> they can only lose one. There's a guaranteed that the Mets and Yankees both don't lose on Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah, I guess. I mean, Guaranteed. Were- yeah, I guess you know, unless they start playing. No, they could no. Cause smoke, they could, Canadian smoke. The smoke, the smoke. Oh, the smoke. The smoke. <laughs> Brent, I went two days. I went two days. That's probably what's got us so angry. We don't even realize right now. Our brains aren't even like functioning at full I would, full now, capacity. I, was I don't know if you guys don't know what's going on in New York right now. We've got uh, these Canadian wildfires blowing some uh, heavy smoke New into York the was area. Number one in the world. Yeah. Number one in the world for the past two days. Worst air quality on earth. Yeah, I and here I am. Ready they had a, they had a celebration in India. I had it was them. For- I had I was working double, so I didn't really see the news or nothing. My mother told me that it was that my mother told my wife yeah. that it was a Jersey fire. So I'm going around the next day. Like you walk out in the corridor in these jails, and I couldn't even see the end of the corridor. It yeah. was smoking, and I'm like, I'm barbecue, telling people it's like the Jersey fire. Summer, there are a lot of barbecues. I'm like, it's the Jersey fire. And people are like, what are you talking about? You There's told a fire everybody? In Jersey too. I, I, yeah. I, I, Spread I, the word, <laughs> just in case. It sounds like this show, just spreading misinformation. Oh, my God. Bob, so. just whatever, yeah, whatever they told you. Is that, is that where you get this info from? Yeah, I do. Uh, well, Your mom? Yeah, well, well yeah, well, no, I get everything from my mom. Right? I love my mom. Oh. I'm, not, I'm not getting on her. I know I just blew up her spot with the Jersey fire, but I'm sure there were fires in Jersey somewhere in the last two days, right? Something went on fire yeah. somewhere in Jersey. Yep. So let's not let's not pile on Ontario, New Jersey. So, so the Yankees, we figure they got an easy schedule. It'll be all right. The Mets, three out, hundred games to play. Let's look on the good side, Brett. You gotta believe, right? You gotta believe. No, no. I've uh, I, I listen. Here's some good news for you. The Florida Panthers, my Florida Panthers. We got ourselves a series they in the Stanley it. Cup Finals. They they uh, it was tight yesterday because they couldn't lose that. You can't go down three zero. 
They came back. They got it. They they tied it late. They got a they got an overtime winner, and we have a series. Bobrovsky, who was struggling the first two games, kind of struggling. They they the, they ran up the the Knights ran up a seven and nine spot on them in game two. The Florida Panthers get a big win last night. It's now two to one series. Game four tomorrow night in Florida. It series hasn't started yet, Brett. Because you this know why? Because the series doesn't start till the home team wins. Loses. I know. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> I, was just, I want to see if you got so it. Say, so we'll see. I, that I was excited about that because I I'm all over these Florida Panthers. The NBA Finals. The Heat looked like they took Game Two. They stole Game Two. It was it would the Heat were coming. They were going to do this. The Any Heat, game they win is going to be them stealing. Denver. It, yeah. The Denver coach called out his team saying, "This ain't the preseason." You guys are giving low effort. I can't believe I have to even bring up effort oh, in the NBA We need finals. him in our locker room in City Field. Yeah, and then, yeah, that's exactly, you're exactly right. And then in game three, the Denver comes out in Miami. They blow him out. It wasn't even as close as the score was. No. I think they won by 12. No. You got Jokic going for 30, 21, 10. You got Murray going for 34, 10, and 10. Do- triple doubles, both of them. It was a historic night. Sick. Can the Heat, now we got game four tonight starting a little bit. Okay. Can the Heat, because they clearly got to win tonight, right? Can the Heat get back into the series? Yeah. Do they? Because yeah. you called that, that. I didn't believe. I thought they were overmatched game one, and they were completely overmatched at the first half they, of game two. They're the same as anything with them. They're, they're going to come out and start shooting. And if they start hitting some shots and someone gets hot and they're knocking down shots, you're not going to stop Jokic. You may stop Murray a little bit. That's the thing is. You think Murray's going to go out and have the same performance that he had, and you're going to have both guys with triple doubles? It's not happening. That's not happening tonight. It's going to be your classic Jokic performance. But again, they actually held him down in that game too. No, nah, I'm sorry. Now here's what they did. They said Jokic, you get your points. We're going to shut everybody else down. Right, but and he didn't have quite the assists and everything else, and that's where they shot him. They held him down. It was low they, effort. They it was low effort. He wasn't. It trying. is, but that's part. They need to have him facilitate the rest of those players. But now here's what worries me. But Jimmy, again, it's going to be Jimmy Butler and and how he goes and if he gets his shots it'll open up the other shots for everybody else so if he's getting into the paint getting a couple short throws it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit better of a game that miami's gonna have a tough go in yeah, any of these here's games what, here's what worries any me. of these games. here's what worries me miami played the best game they could possibly play in game two right they got everything they needed they even got uh 10 points off the bench from the like, guys you've never heard of in yeah. the fourth quarter big threes left and right and Denver still had a yeah. shot at the buzzer that hit yes. the back of the iron. That's the only way they're winning these games is going to be like that. Scrapping them out to where they hold them off And at the, the end. chance of you getting four of those? No, no, no. I don't see that, but you just need to win one. Let you me know, tell you, six, if you get six. this one, you can get one. It's going to be harder in Denver, but they can't. I don't think it's going to happen. Again, I think they win tonight. You think Miami wins tonight? Yeah. I do because I think I think that well, was it's going to take like a, you're going to have someone like Gabe Vincent's going to have to step up. It's not going to be just Jimmy Butler. You have to no, have other no. other guys are going to Bam out out of bio. I, I could miss a point blank you know shot from anywhere. He's doing it. I'm like Patrick Ewing is playing in a yeah, important the game. The game two, the Denver. That was the first home game they've lost in like a month and a half. They, they're, okay, they're, they didn't lost a home game in the playoffs. Yet this season before there, they made it to the finals game two of the finals with home court advantage in all these series without losing a home game. So it was yeah. kind of like, whoa, whoa, we lost this game. The uh, coach you know, is saying we're not trying. Then they went out there and they kicked their ass in game I, three. Um, I have a hard time. You know, nobody cares about the Nuggets. Nobody cares about Jokic. Nobody cares that that's one of the most amazing finals performances that anybody's ever You're seen. Right. Nobody, nobody cares. cares. Nobody cares about Murray also at the other time who... Nobody in this country could even name who he is. Had another triple double. Nobody even cares about. Denver is an under the radar. They are. Yeah. So I'm not going to stop. They're going to. I'm all for them. I'm not saying they might not lose tonight, but there's no. I, I don't see any way they lose this series. Um, I like underdog stories, so I like to see Miami go win. I'd like to see a competitive series. I want to see every game come down to the last shot. But I think we're going to get a lot of games where Miami keeps trying to make it a ten point game. You're going to see a lot of games where Miami's throwing their best to make it a 10-point game. Now, and if by some chance they can make a couple threes late in these games, they might have it down to five points and a chance to steal another one. But it isn't going to be any Miami runaways. Now, I agree with you with the, the nobody cares. But I think we're wrong. The NBA Finals are pulling in huge ratings. Huge ratings. Okay? They, they, people are watching it. People are locked it, into this. They're, like 
They thought nobody would watch Miami in the finals because they're an eight seed. Uh, Wrong. People are watching these Is that games. because more people are watching now? Like, they're watching through social media and everybody's watching everywhere all the time. Like, is their numbers just jumping game in general? One, game one, 11 and a half million people watched. Game two, 11 point, uh, 12 million people watched. Okay? All right. The numbers for how, game three. How does this work? Help me out now. How, how does this really work? Okay. I'm at work, okay? As of two years ago, I'm at work at the exact same place. The NBA Finals are on. We're watching it on the TV. Now, I'm in the same room. It is on on the TV, right? Every single person in the room is also watching on their phone at the same time. How many people are watching that game? No, no, they're not, they're, that's I, not how it works, but it, it works. It, come on. They know come how on. many people Brad, streamed. No, they have. No, the numbers are different, Bob. I know you're used to the Nielsen ratings from 1985 where you think some guy in a box no. at his house is determining how know. many people are watching or not watching. You're saying they know, they know the numbers down to the number. Okay. And I'm Nobody's saying is, are the numbers it on their no. phone and on the TV? That's the wrong. You're not, so wrong. That's not true. You're so wrong. I'm watching in a room that we're watching it on the TV where everybody at some point is literally watching on their phone in a different corner because they can't even see the TV. So I have a TV, a person on a phone, a person on a phone, a <laughs> person on a phone. People are out. I'm out fishing watching the Mets game on my phone now. That never happened in my life until this year. Every time I go fishing, it's 10 o'clock. They're on the West Coast. I'm standing in the ocean, Bob. The game, I can't even see it. I'm just listening. But I'm telling you, I'm watching and streaming and I'm being counted as watching. When I never would have done that. But I'm saying, being, are the numbers. On your TV, it's legitimately happening. I'm saying, are the numbers larger now because more people are actually watching Here's outside what they said. of that? In, in average, I game think that's two, for average, uh, game three, I'm sorry, averaged 11.9 million viewers. It peaked at 16 million viewers. So yeah. they were, you know. I was on my break. It's got a six rating, 11 million viewer average. I mean, it's, it, it's about it's, on it's par a, with last year. Big, NBA Finals are big, big ratings things. It's amazing that in our last time was national what, worldwide. What are we talking here? National broadcast yeah, worldwide. Yeah, yeah, it's it's gonna be. Oh, yeah, no. it's not. Ah, uh, that's a good question. Yeah, it's national. I, I'm it's just national. Say, I'm just saying there's different numbers. Like, but you're right, and you're right. There I is. just think there's an explosion of people being accessed to watching this stuff like at your fingertips, no matter where you are. That is gonna bump some numbers year after year after year. How many people you think watch the NHL finals? In Stanley Ca- Cup finals that aren't trying to fight out wildfire in Canada. We said, not many. We said, but most of them are fighting wildfires. I just right told now. you it averaged eleven million viewers. The NBA finals averaged NBA, eleven million for NBA. Okay. Eleven uh, million. Yeah. What did game? What did last night's game average for the Stanley Cup finals? What was it played on? It was played on um, T- TNT. Uh, T- TNT, the NBA Finals. No, no, Game no. Three. I'm sorry, it was on ABC. It was on. It was on NBA, ABC. ABC. What was the hockey played on? ABC. Both. Last night. Yeah. Um, I, th- I believe it was seven point two. Seven point two million people is what you gonna say, right? This is the difference between this is what the difference. And I never understood it. Yeah. The first two games, and last night included game. The first three games of the of the Stanley Cup Finals. Averaged 2.75 million viewers. Yep. Okay, so now you got five times, almost six times the amount of people watching yeah. the NBA Finals than watching. So you say nobody cares. And you're right. It's not a big talking well, point. Well, then that. Yeah, from NBA. No, it isn't. It's, it, it, they don't. You know what I mean? Like, no, they aren't. That's not what the, the start of Sports Center isn't. Oh, my God. NBA history was made last night. With two guys having triple doubles, with one guy having a 30, 20, 10. It's never happened to either one. Yeah, I, I, yeah, no, they, I agree. And then he repeats it every single day for the whole season. They don't give him the MVP because they say you got to prove it in the playoffs. He shows up and pulls triple double numbers every year with 20 plus point triple double averages. Both I, series are 2 1. I'm sorry. There's nobody who could even come close to touching. He's just doing it quietly. And after the game, they go, What do you think of it? They go, Oh my God, that's the most incredible thing you've. Like, what do you think? He goes, I don't care. Yeah, that's I, his response. Three words I don't care. He's not flashy. He's not flashy. That's he why speak. nobody gets he, you know, he, he's not. He's not. 
all over the TV. He doesn't have the big endorsements, Jokic, and he's a great. He's an all timer. They're an coming. They're player. coming, whether he wants them or not. Not maybe not the big money, but it's pretty going to be pretty big for him if he wins it's this title. I, that's how it goes. Listen, it's something I never understood. I never the, understood how the NHL. His not the NHL flashiness is going to play for him. Watch, it's going to work for him. Like he's going to be the next endorsement guy with not. If being. you sit somebody down that is not a hockey fan, I don't watch hockey. I don't like hockey. You sit them down. And, and put an a, a, a NHL playoff game on. There is nothing more exciting. Oh, yeah. There's nothing I love more, it. Especially a tight game. Now, okay, now listen. Those numbers are going to be down because game you, two was a blowout. It was nine to, it was seven to two, whatever it was. It was over a second period. I get it. But it's still, maybe you get three and a half million. The NHL is way, way down. Baseball's regional. The figure you get like 150,000 watching the Mets game tonight. That's what you're going to get. About 100,000 people yeah. who watch the Mets game tonight. That's just, if in case you're wondering, like, the, the ratios of what, who watches what. You get about 100,000 people who watch the Mets game. You get about 150 to 175 who watch the Yankee game on a, on a nightly basis. So you're getting worldwide two point something million for the NHL final, the Stanley Cup finals. You're getting 11 million for the NBA finals. How many of you think watched the World Series last year? It was it's only like four or five million. Yeah, no, I know. Hey, let me. Tell, there'll be and more then this the year. Super Bowl, you get yo. You get ba- baseball will get some better numbers this year. I can tell you in general, they probably got a little bit of a bump baseball based on people regional. being no. But this, I know. But this year, you're getting a bump because people are like, at least I can turn a baseball game on and know it's going to be over in two and a half hours. That's what I think. That's what I'm. Going. I'm more into it too. Even like knowing I can go like a West Coast game, I might actually get a little invested in it. You're not. We're, you're gonna gamble on it. And that's the no, only thing that's gonna get you. A it's bet not though. true because I, I don't bet. Like I, I, on a weekly basis, like I might make a wager. And even I didn't put it in. Like in my day off, like I'm not gonna sit at home and be like, oh, I'm, you know, the Mets game's on tonight, like any night. But let me tell you, more people are gonna watch a little bit. You watch the NBA Finals tonight? Yeah. Okay. Me too. Okay. Yeah. So now um, let's get on to this. Live golf in the Saudis embarrass. Rory McIlroy, yep. everybody Justin who didn't Speed, take the money, Justin Thomas, Jor- yeah, Jordan Lesson Speed, learned, Jordan folks. Speed, yeah. somebody offers take. you two hundred million, take the money, take the money, right? Because now Mickelson's back in the in the PGA. Wow. They're all back in the PGA. They they got their pockets super, lined with anybody who went to live right now just got all the money in the world, and they were told forever you're never coming back to the PGA. The PGA guys were saying, "Don't leave. If you leave, you're never coming back. You're banned." You're not coming back. Rory McIlroy died on the hill of, I am yep. staying with the PGA. And he I'm can, going down with Do you the know ship. how many mid-level golfers he convinced to not go? No, that's their own fault. You take the money. And but I'm saying, but at some point, he, was the, he is the spokesperson. He is the poster boy for the PGA. And he went in a meeting and said, guys... Do not. I'm telling you, you'll ruin your careers. You'll ruin everything. Think about your families. Think about your reputation. These other guys, Brooks, Kepka, every Bryson DeChambeau, they got eaten alive for it. Phil Mickelson gave him his own thing. He's an idiot on his own level. He's but let me idiot. tell you. I mean, he's, he's got $200 million now But the pocket. other guys went out and were given all the money in the world, and they are now allowed to come back with their money. And everybody else is here. And they go, oh, PJ goes, you know what? If you want to make money for us, you just got to go out and win a tournament. Who's this the weekend. idiot, Brett? Who's the idiot? McElroy yeah. or it's not or the Mickelson? This is the funny part. It's not the PGA. It's not Live, and it's not the Live guys. It's just the PGA guys who didn't go. The PGA made out. Live made yeah. out. Well, the PGA, yes and no, because Jay Monahan, the, the commissioner, he's going to have to. Well, they, get, he's gonna, they did. Well, they gave so much control to the Saudis. It's crazy. That's the sick part. Because if he had anything, he would have. He would have went with, forward with the lawsuit, and he would have sued them. Of course, he, they said show. He didn't want to show his books. The PGA is clearly struggling with this money. This is the sickest part of the deal that they don't even talk about, and it's that the Saudis now have the the rights. For every loan and every dollar that the PGA ever borrows ever again in the history of the PGA, so the Saudi fund, the trust fund, has the right at first refusal to give them that money. That means that every money borrowed and every interest payment, and that means the PGA at some point will be owned by the Saudis, and they will have full control over some kind of long term. Let me tell you, the PGA gave up a lot. 
Which is whatever. And the PGA, here's what the PGA did. Here's it's money. Trying, they were obviously, they didn't yes, have the money. They, didn't have the money. they realized that they were hemorrhaging money and they were trying to save, fight, the, live, and make their thing stay. Without Tiger Woods, they have a hard time. But we're all The sitting, ratings yeah, and everything yeah, else, they have a very hard time. But we're all sitting, And they were they hemorrhaging this, money. And they were like, this, before, they were like, let's get this done with because before anybody sees what's really going on. So you're right. Without Tiger Woods, they have a hard time, but then they lose Kepka and Mickelson and, and, and Dustin and DJ. What it is is, they didn't want to show you the books, but we all we're sitting here. We didn't see the books. We all know what he did. He had no money. He didn't want to open his books to show that they had no money. They need the money, and and here's what they're trying to sell you, which is garbage. Because I saw an interview with Monahan on the on the Golf Channel, and he was he was bumbling and stumbling over his words. He didn't know what to say. Right. We kept the tradition. Still going to be an 18 hole game, Brett. We're still playing with a white ball and a hole. Is <laughs> basically what he said. Yeah. We kept the tradition. They're still doing the, the four-day tournaments. It's not going to be any of that, you know, give the players a break and right, player-friendly right. stuff. That's, but that's the, garbage. No. Nobody cares about Nobody that. Nobody cares about any of that. Because the shark, uh, Greg Norman, jumped ship, and he went and started this whole thing. And then, you know what? And they're all laughing their way to the bank, and they're right back at the PGA. Mickelson, Kepka, DJ, yep. Greg Norman, they're all laughing their way to the bank with $200 million plus in their pockets. And even Tiger, forget about it, Tiger screwed up here too. Because I don't care how much money you have, $600, $800 million he was that over they offered 600. Him, you don't turn yeah. that down. And forget about the Saudi, oh, the Saudi dirty money and this and that. Oh, the Uber, everybody takes Uber, right? That's all coming from Saudi money. Oh no! Every single so, company. So, so stop no, it. every single company. So stop is with in, your moral it, it, high Every horse. single company has a deal with the Saudi. Every, your favorite companies, Budweiser and you that's all like Coca Cola. Oh, they, you, the the companies, all of them. You all would have taken the money. And you all would have went. And if you didn't, you're an idiot. And and Rory's an idiot for not doing it. And he could sit there and die on that hill if I did the right thing. They got scammed by the PGA. The and, PGA players got scammed. And when they were you, they were blowing smoke up their ass. When do you ever see? These these new leagues merge with the with the, the established. Okay, you, well, you you don't see the the XFL they, merging with the NFL. But they pulled it. They pulled off the same concept that the uh, ABA NBA. They pulled the same concept AFL, of the NFL, AFL NFL. NFL. They pulled it off without even having to get to their guys. Really, like you they know what it was? For what like six months? The three big, months? The big stuff was that they realized that without them, without the best competition, their majors aren't really their majors anymore. Is what they realized. Their tournaments aren't really their well, tournaments the major, anymore. They let them play in the majors. No, no, I understand. That's why they let them play in the majors because they realized initially and that was the first step of if they held out for two or three years, they may have been right and had a couple of guys come back to them. But it didn't. They realized that with that happened, nobody's going to watch the watch the Masters. If imagine Brooks Kepka doesn't make the Masters this year and everybody else is in it, yeah. great. You still have a good competition, but you don't have the elite players. And let me tell you, that fades real quick. Without Tiger Woods, you don't even have Tiger Woods anymore. You know, but you're right. That's why they let them play the majors. Of because you know what? The regular, the normal no, golf Nobody fan, cares about the regular yeah, week. I don't, I don't even nobody watch Nobody watched the regular week. week. You'll watch this Find new... Find out who won. The new Full Swing thing actually got me into it, where last year I was telling you about the Netflix Brent's documentary full, full Swing. swing. Let me I tell you, you will actually care about the week to week right, because they're into it. it. But you, you learn really quick that... All the guys aren't playing week to week. There's so many different tours and, and tournaments tours. and everything else that's going on. And you have the choice between going over here for charity money and this one. It's, listen, this is the best thing for golf overall. There's a couple guys who got screwed along the way. There's a couple guys who got rich along the way. Moral of the story, take the money. And the corporation will screw you every single time. For the young, they, don't, they will tell you whatever you want to hear. At the last second, they will do what's best for them. Of course, that's why we have to have regulations yep. in this country with, co with, with corporations because they don't do the right thing unless they're forced to do the right thing. Business doesn't do the right thing unless they're forced to do the right Quick thing. Quick word about the LPGA's new star. And let me tell you, this girl went out and won the uh, national championship for her uh, for her uh, Stanford Cardinals just like two weeks ago or three weeks ago, Rose Zhang. She turns pro that week. She goes out and wins in a playoff. Her first PGA Tour event or LPGA Tour event. And I'm telling you, they're talking about this girl. The next Tiger Woods, blah, 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 blah. You know what? She's the next Rose Zhang. You're going to hear this name. No, you're going to watch a women's golf tournament and you've never have. At some point in the next three years, you will watch Brett, a women's golf tournament. Brett, one, our ratings just dropped below the Stanley Cup. Love Cup. it. Two, Love it. Michelle Wee. Yeah. She was the same thing. Nobody no, cared. No, Nobody no, no, no. cared. This girl showed up and did it. 
No, this girl. No, nobody, no we didn't. No, no, no. no. She like did 14. not show up and win her first tournament and her first start, and then even in a playoff versus some of the best and go do it. Where the week, this is first day on. The, this isn't she won her first tournament. No, no, no. This is her first start. It's first Michelle win. Wee. It's no, what it is. no. Michelle Wee was hype. Hype. This is the thing. <laughs> this is the real thing. Stanford Cardinal Tiger. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right, Tiger. No so, joke. National champion. So Stanford national. Would she have take the money? Would she take the money? She did take the is money. She said, I'm out. Is there a live women's tour? Uh, well, let me ask you this. She is still, she's still, because I heard her, she's going to still play for Stanford, right? She didn't get paid for this win, right? Good question. I didn't she know. Didn't no, she turned pro. Because you enter it. No, you enter the tournament as an amateur. Right? It's how you enter the tournament, not how you leave the tournament. Because if you enter the tournament as an amateur, you don't get paid. And the second you get paid for winning, you're right. You, right. I thought she was done. I thought that was like the end of her career, and then she moved on. Right. So, so be coming on here with women's golf stuff and not know all the stuff that's no, going on. No, no, you're just throwing stuff out there because you're just hating. That on. was a legitimate yeah. question, and you know that was a legitimate question because you got no. It is legitimate if she's yeah, if she's amateur or not amateur. That yeah, <laughs> but she she turned pro and she won her first tournament. So no, you can no, you can hate. You can hate on her. That's not a big deal. How many? How many? Not a big, I can't wait. She's gonna be the next. Are you big watching thing. women's golf? Now? Listen, what? Are you? Are you gonna watch? Are you, are you gonna watch any of the women's golf? When just she Zang. Plays this week? Just Zang. No, you don't get to watch just Zang. It's just on. Just Zang. Like, you can't even find no, women's what, golf no. in the Thursday through. Until See, you're wrong because this is what happens: is the moment there's one person to watch, that's all we watch. That's the only person that's gonna be on camera the entire day. Oh, uh, fair, fair, okay, fair. But where you you're not gonna watch women's golf. You're gonna see what's going on. You're gonna watch it on Sports Center. They'll show the highlights. Van Pelt will come on there and he'll have some witty thing to say about this Michelle Zhang. Yeah. And and that's where you see it. You are not sitting down on Sunday and turning on the women's golf I'm, to see if she wins. I'm starting up the new club called the Rose Bros. <laughs> it's so stupid. Rose Rose Bros. LPJ tour, I'm in. I don't care. I'm, I'm actually going. At the next event, she comes to Long Island. I'm getting us tickets, and we're going. Yeah, it's not anybody. Can, they give them away, Brett. Bob, the, there's not know, really that much space on those courses. There's only a couple hundred acres. <laughs> they give them away. Nobody goes. My my father. Do you think we? To, how, do you think we need to wait now, or should we get them now? Should we wait or get them right now? Well, you want to play the stub hub? I don't want to. I don't want to miss wait. out. Here's who goes. Ready? Here's who goes to the. My father went to the. Do they the, charge the same price for the beers? I have yeah, so many questions. Yeah, beers are always the same price. I don't think so. Listen, the, but my like, father went to a, a women's, and he raves about it. He raved about it. There's two people I know that have gone to women's golf and both rave about it. So to prove you right, my father, he went down in Florida. I think he went to like one of the, 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 one of the women's tournaments down there and Ryan McGordy. Okay. And you know Ryan McGordy. Ryan McGordy likes a couple things. He likes Christmas, he likes the America, and he likes going to women's golf. The women's golf is... is <laughs> that's... <laughs> I can understand it. And you know what? Let's just hope that your dad picks better sports than your mom picks uh, fires. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they got divorced, Brett. That's why it didn't work out. Now, the uh, and then speaking of another the dead sport, as as uh, most of it, uh, horse racing. Are we going to play the Belmont? Are we going to not play the Belmont? It depends because on how no many parts. And I didn't mean dead. So don't look at me like that. I didn't mean dead sport like horses. But Brett, I saw it. Don't, don't look at me good. like Did that. Did you see that? I, I, didn't I was waiting for like, like some that. type of opening to, no. to figure this out. I know you did. I, was I like, saw it. Listen, like Bob, Bob, all right, let's not beat a dead horse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, 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 they have like, are, It depends on how many particulates are in the uh, atmosphere. The there run. is a number. No, there's a number. I know there is. There's an actual... Listen, if we get up to 50 PPUs, Bob, <laughs> we're not We're racing. all experts in this stuff. The kids can go out and play. Horses? Nope. No. Animals, we've got to worry about. The children? Get them out on the field. <laughs> now, Mets, Yankees, play them. It, would it be different if there was a triple crown coming, coming to, to Belmont this weekend? Would, there, they, would they be they there treating is, it differently? Because they don't care about the horses. Let's be real. They, we know they don't care about the horses. No, <laughs> but how funny if it was the, like, the worst day? <laughs> and they did it. Like, they race them, but the horses are like, glug, glug. <laughs> glug, glug. No, they're barely going. They're like, it's it's the most pathetic race you've ever the seen. The quarter in five minutes. Whoever, <laughs> nobody finished. 